In our previous episodes, we explored the seminal work on sequence-to-sequence modeling with recurrent neural networks. Specifically, we saw how the attention mechanism improved the encoder-decoder architecture for language translation. In this episode, we'll look at the groundbreaking transformer architecture, which builds on top of everything we've seen so far to deliver incredible performances. The transformer architecture was presented in the 2017 landmark paper, Attention is all you need. In this paper, the authors devised an efficient approach to handling sequence-to-sequence tasks such as language translation. They achieved this by replacing the recurrent layers with a so-called self-attention mechanism. This allowed them to parallelize computations and get considerably better performances than previous models that used RNNs. Although the paper did not set out to be revolutionary, its pragmatic approach inadvertently led to a significant shift in natural language processing and beyond. The key consideration at the basis of transformers is that the introduction of attention in the encoder-decoder network makes recurrence redundant. Let's see why. As we saw in the previous episode, for each word the decoder is translating, the attention mechanism computes a context from the hidden representations of all input words. At the same time, each of these hidden representations of the input words is influenced by all preceding words because of the recurrence mechanism. This means that these hidden representations are effectively overloaded as the context calculated via the attention mechanism already includes information from all of the input words, making the additional layer of recurrence superfluous. So why not just remove recurrence from the encoder altogether? That does work, but there is an issue we have to deal with. When we remove the recurrence in the encoder, we are left with a simple feed-forward layer that computes the hidden representations of the input words. This means that these representations become completely independent, losing any form of meaningful relationship with each other. This is a problem. For example, we saw how the word the can be translated in different ways in Italian, depending on the word it refers to but we would not know anymore which word it refers to if we just removed recurrence. This is where self-attention comes into play. The idea is to add an attention mechanism within the encoder so that each input word can directly attend to every other word in the input sentence. This self-attention can also be seen as a communication system, a way to pass information between input words. In practice, through self-attention, the model computes a set of queries, keys, and values for each word. We now use these values to compute a hidden representation for each word in the same way that we would compute a context in a standard attention model. Let's do this for the first word. We use the query for the first word, Q0, and the keys for all input words to compute the raw attention scores. We pass them through a softmax to obtain attention weights. We then compute a weighted sum of the values with the attention weights, obtaining the hidden representations for the first word. We repeat this to compute the hidden representations for all the input words. We call this a self-attention head. If we zoom out, the entire self-attention layer takes the input words and computes a hidden representation for each of them. As we saw before, this layer typically contains multiple attention heads with their own learnable parameters. This gives each head the ability to potentially focus on different aspects of language. Then, we simply concatenate all the attention head outputs and pass them through a multi-layer perceptron, usually just a single feed-forward layer followed by an activation such as ReLU. This constitutes a multi-head self-attention block. Finally, we can stack multiple self-attention blocks on top of each other to deepen our network. The key advantage of replacing recurrence with self-attention is that the entire input sequence can be processed in parallel. Computing all the hidden representations at once 
rather than one word or token at a time. The memory and computational requirements, however, do increase with the length of the input sentence, but not in a linear way. Self-attention requires computing attention weights for each pair of words in the sequence. This means that the computational complexity in time and space of the attention mechanism is quadratic with respect to the sequence length. For this reason, transformers are designed and trained with a maximum input size or context size to keep the memory and computing requirements in check. Now, even with self-attention, our model is still missing something. In RNNs, the sequential processing inherently captures positional information and distance between words or tokens. But transformers remove recurrence, so they need an explicit mechanism to understand word order and relative positioning. To compensate for these, positional encodings are integrated with word embeddings. These encodings are distinct vectors corresponding to each input position, designed to be unique and distance dependent. They have the same dimensions as the word embeddings, so that they can be summed. The original transformer implemented these using fixed, non-learnable vectors generated from sine and cosine functions of different frequencies. These positional encodings are shift invariant, meaning that the model can recognize patterns that remain the same regardless of their position in the input sequence. In contrast to fixed positional encodings, some transformer models use learnable positional encoding. They are essentially implemented as an embedding layer where each position in the sequence generates its own embedding vector. The weights of this positional embedding layer are learned along with the other parameters of the model during training. The number of elements in the positional embedding layer matches the context size of the model, which dictates the maximum number of inputs it can process. As we did for the encoder, we can also remove recurrence in the decoder and replace it with self-attention. This will allow each step of the decoder to attend to every word that's been generated so far. However, we need to make a small adjustment to the attention mechanism in the decoder to ensure that we train the model correctly. This is called masked self-attention. Because there is no recurrence, during training, we can feed the decoder the entire target sequence at once for parallel computation. As a result, each attention head in the decoder can calculate the full attention matrix and make predictions for the entire sequence simultaneously. However, there is an issue with this approach. If the decoder has unrestricted access to the entire target sequence, the attention matrix at each step would consider all target words, including those that come after the current word in the sequence. This scenario would allow the decoder to cheat by looking ahead at future words. To prevent this, we apply a mask during the self-attention computation. This mask effectively disables all elements above the diagonal of the matrix, ensuring that future words in the sequence are hidden from the current decoding step. For example, this ensures that when predicting the third token, the self-attention mechanism only looks at the previous two tokens, ignoring the rest of the column in the attention matrix. As we stack up multiple attention blocks, the network becomes deeper. As we saw in a previous episode, deep networks are hard to train, as gradients do not propagate well they suffer from issues such as vanishing or exploding gradients. To tackle these issues, transformers use a solution called residual or skip connections. Introduced in the 2015 paper Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition, residual connections work by allowing the input of a layer to skip some layers and be added directly to the output of later layers. This approach facilitates gradient flow during backpropagation, as it provides a shortcut for the gradient to travel through the network. By doing so, it alleviates the vanishing gradient problem and enables deeper networks to learn effectively. 
As we saw in a previous episode, it is common to use normalization techniques to stabilize the distribution of data at various layers of the network. Now, this can speed up training and lead to better overall performance. Chasomes make heavy use of a form of normalization called layer normalization. In layer normalization, we look at each input vector independently. These vectors are the input words or their subsequent representations as data flows through the different layers of the network. For each input, we calculate the mean and standard deviation for its features independently. We then use these calculations to normalize the values. The output of normalization is essentially a set of adjusted values where each token's features are scaled and shifted in a way that their mean is zero and their variance is one. Numerically, this means that the features of each input vector are transformed to have the same scale, making it easier for the model to learn. In transformers, layer norm is applied between attention and feed forward layers, and it helps maintain a consistent scale and distribution of these features, which makes the self-attention mechanism more effective and stable. We are now ready to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and look at the complete transformer architecture from start to finish. We start by embedding input tokens and adding positional encodings to them. This goes through multiple self-attention heads, eight in the original model. Having multiple heads gives the network a chance to better focus on different aspects of the input. The outputs of the attention heads are combined and forwarded on to a multi-layer perceptron. To facilitate training via many deep layers and stabilize numerical computations, residual connections and layer normalization are incorporated between layers. This setup forms one encoder block. In the original transformer model, there were six such blocks. We then start the decoder with a start of sentence token, which goes through embedding and positional encodings, followed by a series of decoder blocks. These blocks are the same as the encoder, but have an additional layer in the middle for the so-called cross attention. This takes in the outputs of its own self-attention layer and the hidden representations of all input tokens produced by the encoder. This allows the decoder to selectively focus on specific input words while producing the next token. The outputs of the decoder are then passed through a linear layer to generate logits and then through softmax to generate the output probabilities. We sample one word from these probabilities and we feed it back to the decoder to continue generating the translation. This is the same as in the simple RNN model we built a few episodes ago, with a difference. Here, each time, we feed back to the decoder the entire sequence generated so far, not just the last word predicted. This is because there is no hidden state to carry context forward step by step as in a recurrent network. Each time the decoder operates, it needs to compute self-attention over the entire sequence of words it has generated so far. Removing recurrence allowed transformers to parallelize operations, obtaining significant computational efficiency. Compared to state-of-the-art translation models of the time, they required three orders of magnitude less computation. In the next episode, we'll look at models such as GPT and BERT. These are based on transformers, but only use either the encoder or the decoder part. Their introduction marked a considerable step forward, outperforming existing models in language modeling and language understanding tasks. Thank you for watching until the end. This really helps the channel grow. And if you like my content and you want me to make more content, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing, leaving a like and a comment. This teaches the YouTube algorithm that maybe the stuff that I'm doing makes sense and it's worth pushing to other people. Thank you very much for the support. See you next time.